Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. Titans fans, it is a Wednesday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. And on today's show, we finally open up the mailbag. You guys have been sending me some fantastic questions, talking Titans, talking draft, talking everything else as well. And I'm excited to answer all of them, give some shout outs, and have a good time on a Wednesday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Titans fans, it is a Wednesday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast, opening up the mailbag and answering your guys' questions, talking about the Titans, my top five receivers in the draft, my most overrated NFL team and player, excited for that one as well. But we got a lot to discuss, we're going to dive into it. Before we do though, I got to thank you guys for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen Every day, if this is your first ever listen to the Locked On Titans podcast, make sure that you subscribe on whatever platform you do stream. You can find the Locked On Titans podcast on all platforms and always free. And that includes the Locked On Titans YouTube channel. Subscribe over there. Smash that notification bell so you know when all of my shows go live. Throw a thumbs up on the video if you are watching on YouTube right now. I definitely do appreciate it. You can find me on Twitter at Tic Tac Titans. Find the show Facebook page at Locked On Titans Pod. Monday through Friday, daily Tennessee Titans content coming here on the Locked On Titans podcast. But with that being said, it is time to dive into some mailbag questions. I always enjoy these shows. Uh, Love hearing from you guys, reading and responding. Uh, The first question here we got from Titans Keegan, Iowa Titans fan. He says, uh, who are your top five receivers in the draft? Well, I'm going to get a lot of questions about wide receivers in the draft, and I'm excited to go through them all. But as to start, my top five, pretty simply right now, in no order, just throwing the names out there, uh, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, both the guys from Ohio State. I like Drake London and Traylon Burks. Uh, Drake London from USC, Traylon Burks from Arkansas, and then my fifth guy is Jamison Williams from Alabama, even with the ACL tear. ACLs repair so quickly nowadays, and we've seen a lot of guys come back and not have issues, so uh, I have trust that Jamison Williams will be fine and able to play, even if it's uh, a little limited in his first year. I still think he can make an impact as a first-year wide receiver, so good question there from Keegan. Uh, Kevin Davis says, if you are John Robinson and you take a quarterback in round one, Do you sit him behind Tannehill or do you trade Tannehill post June 1st when his money comes down and collect the draft capital next year and throw the rookie into the fire? Well, Kevin, this is an easy answer for me. Uh, Number one, if you tried to trade Ryan Tannehill right now, there would be a market. But look at the quarterbacks that are on the trade market right now that have no home. Look at Jimmy Garoppolo. Look at Baker Mayfield. And even if I think that Ryan Tannehill is better than both those players, just their existence within the market is going to bring Ryan Tannehill's draft capital return down. There's, that's basically the only way that you can look at it because teams will look, why would I pay this price for Ryan Tannehill when I could play a li- pay a little bit of a discounted price for Baker Mayfield, who's younger, and maybe we can get some more potential out of him. Whether you agree with that or not, there will be teams that look at it that way. So having a surplus in the market is going to drive the demand down, which is going to drive the price down. So I don't think that trading Ryan Tannehill, even if, you know, the quarterback was good right away, would be the best move. So that's one step of it. But number two, any rookie quarterback that the Titans get in this draft, I don't think that they are going to be ready to go. Maybe some of these quarterbacks turn out better than some of the prognosticators think, and this quarterback class is better than what some people are projecting, even myself. But even if that is the case, none of these quarterbacks are going to be immediate studs, and if there is going to be one, I think it would be Malik Willis. And I don't think the Titans will have a shot at Willis. I think he'll ultimately go top 10. So. The way that I see it is any quarterback the Titans get if they do take quarterback in round one is going to have to sit behind Ryan Tannehill for the betterment of his development. Think about Patrick Mahomes and Alex Smith. That's the best example I can give. I'm going to stick with that throughout the rest of draft season up until I wouldn't go with quarterback, like I said, in round one if I were John Robinson, but I'm going to leave that decision to J-Rob. And if there's a quarterback they feel like getting, I'm going to be excited 
uh, about the opportunity there, depending on who the player is. No Carson Strong, no Kenny Pickett, please. But uh, either way, you absolutely would keep Tannehill, play Tannehill as the starter, and set up a succession plan for the rookie quarterback in 2023 or 2024, depending on how things go. Uh, good question there, though, Kevin. Next, uh, Albert said, Perfect scenario where the Titans land Jelani Woods and your thoughts on the player. So Jelani Woods, tight end out of Virginia. He's a transfer from Oklahoma State. Big bodied guy, six foot seven, 260 pounds, uh, massive catch radius, can really body guys out and use body positioning to be a matchup problem. But I am not as high on Jelani Woods as a lot of Titans fans and the Titans fan base seems to be. I would say the perfect scenario for getting Jelani Woods would be the fifth round. For me, if you could get him a little bit later, that would be great. Uh, not an incredibly explosive player. He's not going to be a yards after catch threat. Uh, when we talk about route running, uh, he has a tendency to slow down in his breaks. He's not very explosive in and out of his cuts. And it's probably because he's such a big guy. You know what I mean? I see him more as a Mo Alley Cox type of player, a secondary tight end, a backup tight end, kind of like a Jeff Swain role. I think that would be his role. Now, of course, these late round tight ends, any of them could explode at any time. And you're right and wrong about players at every turn when you look at the draft. But for me, despite uh, having a good mentality, I mean, I'm not saying Jelani Woods a bad player by the size. He's a smart player. It seems to understand zone coverage. Good personality in terms of toughness out on the personality in his play. Good toughness. He wants to block. He's a willing blocker. He needs some technique work in blocking with his, with his hand work. But uh, at the end of the day, that's what going to the next level is for. So uh, the willingness is there, and that's the most important thing for me when we talk about blocking from college tight ends. Are they willing and physical? And then you can mold from there and teach better technique to these guys. But with not being a yards after the catch threat, not being a great route runner, um, not being incredibly polished as a blocker already. All of those to me, fifth, sixth round would be a good fit, but, uh, uh, I'm not, again, I'm not as high on him as maybe a lot of people are in the fan base, even though I'd be okay with drafting him. Just like I said, fifth, sixth round would make me feel most comfortable, but three really good questions to start. Wanted to come out of the gate with some bangers there for you guys. Uh, we got a lot of questions to get to, and you can already tell I like to run long and go deep into these questions because they're such good questions. You guys do a great job. So we're going to continue a Mailbag Wednesday in just a moment. Before we get into more questions, though, I do want to tell you guys about the best tasting protein bars in the galaxy from our friends over at Built Bar. Um, we're into, you know, the end of March, start in April. Yeah, your New Year's resolutions are probably past you at this point, but you can make it easy to continue to eat healthy if you incorporate Built Bars, the best protein bars in the world, into your plan. They give you the best of both worlds. So they're healthy for you. They're low calorie, low sugar, uh, high protein, high fiber, but there's also some incredibly delicious flavors. It's really unbelievable that this is a protein bar and this is the kind of flavor that you get. Uh, the white chocolate cheesecake, amazing peanut butter brownie, salted caramel, and they have these puff bars, which have like a marshmallow in the, a marshmallowy taste and texture in the middle of the crunch bars, which are obviously crunchy. I mean, just dynamite with the additional textures. So you got to check out Built Bars. Go to Built.com right now. Use the promo code LOCKED15. You're going to get 15% off your order. Once again, that is promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Titans fans, we are going to continue this Mailbag Wednesday edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Dive into more of your questions. Before we do, though, I do want to thank you guys again for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen every day. I do want to also tell you guys about the Locked on NFL podcast. You get your Titans news here with me in under 30 minutes, Monday through Friday. So Monday through Friday in under 30 minutes, get all your NFL news as well. It's a perfect companion podcast. For your drive to work, once you get to work, right away, all your Titans, all your NFL, it's free and available on all platforms, just like the Locked On Titans podcast, and I also do a little bit of hosting over there, I host the Thursday show, might be moving around, who knows, but uh, uh, I would really appreciate it if you guys would check out the Locked On NFL podcast, check out the YouTube channel, it's a great way, again, to get your national NFL news, but diving back into these mailbag questions. Going to have to roll through them, guys. It's time. Next question. Uh, it's me. Says, tighten up 1985. Are you superstitious or do anything silly on game day? If so, what do you do? Okay, so 
I don't want to say that I'm not superstitious, but I don't do, I don't have any like routines or anything like that. All I know is I need my notebook. Uh, when I don't have my notebook, I feel anxious. I need my notebook. And I guess I don't mean to like sully the fun, but like when I watch the game, I have to take notes the whole time. I have to tweet out things that I see to you guys. So I'm kind of locked in. I'm not having, I guess watching games is different now that I do the podcast than it was when I was 10 years old and I was just purely a fan and just cared about up and down every play. Things are just a little bit different now for me. So I kind of uh, put any of that stuff away. The only thing I will say I will do if I want the Titans to win really bad um, and things aren't going great, I'll put on my Kevin Byron jersey. So that usually happens at like halftime if the Titans are playing bad or if I'm wearing a jersey for some reason, which Byron is the only one that I have, and the Titans are playing terrible at halftime, I'll take it off. So I guess that counts, right? Uh, Kenneth, Texas Sports, 1015, my God. He says, uh, the Titans are dead set on a round one ride, uh, receiver. Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, and Burks are gone. You can't trade back. Who is your pick between Drake London, Jahan Dotson, Sky Moore, and Jamison Williams? Uh, so... I'm more intrigued with Drake London than than some people are, but he's still my fifth out of my top five. Jahan Dotson, guys, I got to tell you, it's like the Jelani Wood things. I am not in for the Jahan Dotson pick, especially at uh, at 26. I want speed added to this offense, but Dotson is just a touch too small to take that high. Okay, if they got Jahan Dotson in the third round, which I know he won't be there, but you never know what could happen, uh, then I would be okay with it. But 26? No way. So uh, I feel similarly about Sky Moore. Uh, I like Sky Moore a little bit better than Jahan Dotson, to tell you the honest truth, though. But uh, Jamison Williams would be my pick. I He's only not, he would be the first or second wide receiver taken in the draft if he didn't have a torn ACL. And we see guys come back from torn ACLs all the time. I mean, it's just. The Achilles is the new ACL, in my opinion. The way we used to think about the ACL is how the Achilles is now. And Cam Akers came back from an Achilles in five months. I know that's rare, but, you know, the medical advances start to happen, and these things are different than they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So, to me, I'm not that worried about Jamison Williams. I would take him in the first round if he is there. Uh, So, that would be my pick. Uh, This is a fun one. Uh, The Canadian Titan. uh, My guy, always, always bickering with me on Twitter. I appreciate you. He said, uh, who do you think is the most overrated team and player in the NFL? I'm making this quick. The most overrated team is the Colts. I mean, we saw they had even a decent season, and people were calling them Super Bowl favorites. Nobody wants to see them in the playoffs. Jonathan Taylor's the MVP, and then they don't even make the playoffs. You know, so they just constantly get national love, and I think they were so consistent during the Peyton Manning years that media members felt safe saying that the Colts are going to be good. This is my new, my new clad theory. Media members felt safe that the Colts were going to be good. So if they predicted the Colts to be good, it was just a, a something they could bank on, hey, I'm going to get that right. So media teams have a, a an affinity for the Colts because they led them uh, or were a rock-solid option, someone they could count on throughout so many years to make sure that they weren't blatantly wrong. So now people still have lingering effects from that. They like them, and they always pump them up. But uh, we know the truth. So the Colts, and this is going to be a hot one, okay? The most overrated player in the NFL is Lamar Jackson. He won his MVP. I compare it to when Robert Griffin III won Rookie of the Year. Um, Incredibly explosive player, incredibly talented player, phenomenal. um, But not sustainable long-term. and. Lamar's just always sick last year. That was strange. Non-COVID illnesses and stuff. And I I guess I just kind of get the sense that he is who he is. We've seen the highest peak with the MVP season. And he's still a a really good player. I think he's right there in that bottom top 10 range. Um, With me, maybe a little outside of the top 10, 11 or 12. Right around the, you know, Dak Prescott, right around uh, Kyler Murray, right around Ryan Tannehill, um, Kirk Cousins. Uh, Lamar Jackson is a lot better than Ryan Tannehill. It's a different tier. But uh, either way, I I just, I think it's fascinating. Great highlights, talented to watch, MVP year, 
blew the doors off the NFL with the style that they committed to. But I just don't think that he's up there with Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow. Like, I don't think he's there. I don't think he's as good as those guys. So uh, people consider Lamar up there, and I don't. So that's my hot take for you. Uh, Dom Odell says, do you think the new OT rules minimize defenses even more? So the NFL approved new overtime rules on Tuesday where both teams get the ball in the playoffs. Um, I don't think it minimizes defenses anymore because the reality is this is just like a kick the can down the road because what if both teams score? And then the team, then it's sudden death and the team that won the coin toss and gets the ball third it's just the same scenario again, and people are going to be howling about it. So until both teams get an equal chance with the ball and get the same amount of possessions, nobody's going to be happy. So I think they're fine, but I don't think it really changes much to the way it was before. Uh, David Wonder says, offensive lineman or QB first round? Uh, I mean, in a vacuum, I would rather go offensive line if you have a good guy there like a Trevor Penning, Zion Johnson. Um, that's That's where I would lean. But with the way it's looking like it's going to go, and of course anything can happen at any moment, but the way it looks like, I would probably go quarterback. Because if you're looking at Tyler Linderbaum, uh, Tyler Smith from Tulsa, uh, uh, Rainman from Minnesota, if you're looking at guys like that, I mean, there's got to be one of the quarterbacks that Matt Corral or Desmond Ritter has to be available at that point if there was a huge run on offensive line. It, it's going to balance out. Either there's going to be a wide receiver, there's going to be an offensive line, there's going to be a quarterback that's interesting because there's going to be a run on two of those positions, even three of those positions. And even if that's the case, there's going to be somebody there of interest, but I would go offensive line in a vacuum. Uh, Corbin, Corbin3 says, what running backs do you think we should look at in this draft? Late round guys I like, James Cook. I know some people, he's very divisive, but you just cannot tell me that James Cook isn't going to be a guy who plays some good football in the NFL. Uh, Tyler Goodson out of Iowa is a guy I've really locked on to. I really like Tyler Goodson. A little small, uh, not super um, elite in any category, but really good vision, multiple run game uh, that he's running zone and some power and some gap. Uh, can catch the ball out of the backfield, really showed good chops in the pre-draft process there. So I really like Tyler Goodson. And I know there's been some injuries, but uh, Zamir White out of Georgia, I just think he he's probably not a second contract player, but you could get some good run on it. Like Sony Michelle out of Georgia, had some good runs, wore down after the first three or four years. That's probably Zamir White, but right now I think that would be a good help to the Titans to spell Derrick Henry. And then you have Dontrell Hilliard as the third, uh, third down running back. I think that's a solid option. Um, Tim Palm says, what is your opinion about the games in Germany? By the way, greetings from Germany. Tim, I got to tell you, one of the things that still just absolutely floors me doing this podcast is people all over the world listen to the show. So thank you very much. Very appreciative to get the greetings from Germany. Uh, I'm all for it. Expand the game globally. I love football. Football has given so much to me. It's been so important in my life throughout my childhood, bond with my father, what I'm doing now, living my dream. Uh, football puts food on the table for me. Uh, it's unbelievable. All my friends I met through playing football, uh, so much of my growth as a person and life lessons and all that cheesy stuff, I learned through football. I mean, football was my religion. I woke up on Sunday mornings and I went to the football field for 10 hours every week. I mean, football was my life and is still mostly my life. So uh, expanding the game globally, letting it impact other kids, letting it have the impact that it had on me for kids all over the country, not just in America, I'm absolutely all for that. And that sort of exposure and expansion, uh, I couldn't tell you. Uh, I can't properly put in the words just how much that stuff means to me and how happy I, I am when I see things like that. So greetings to you, Tim. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, uh, more, more games in Germany. Expand this game all over the world. and. Uh, let it impact uh, everybody like it's impacted America. But uh, with that being said, getting overly emotional and all wrapped up in my feelings about football, you guys know how it is. I'm a football nerd, and I'm proud of it. But uh, with that being said, we're going to move into our last segment 
of mailbag questions. Still have a lot of good ones to get into. Before we do, got to tell you guys about rockauto.com. Rockauto.com is a family business that's been serving auto parts customers online for over 20 years. The big thing that stands out to me is if you go to an auto parts store, one thing I didn't know is they can actually charge you more if you're not a professional mechanic. Some of the price tiers are 30%, 50%, 100% higher. For the same part that the guy next to you is buying. You had to put on pants, come to the store. They might not even have the part in stock. You got to wait for it to be shipped in anyways. I mean, cut out the middleman. Go directly to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. When you place your order, write locked on in the how did you hear about us box. It's right underneath your shipping information. So they know that I sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all of the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. Titans fans, let's cap off this Mailbag Wednesday edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. I still got quite a bit of questions to get into, so excited to dive into those with you guys. Before we do, of course, I got to thank you for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen every day. As for that second listen, it's draft season. If you want to get as ready as possible for the NFL draft in less than a month, you got to check out the Locked on NFL Draft podcast hosted by Ryan Tracy. Former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker. They're giving you mock drafts, doing player rankings, player profiles, all of that. But they also look at the draft from a front office point of view. So you got to make sure that you check out the Locked On NFL Draft podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, free and available on all platforms, including the YouTube page. So check it out if you're on YouTube. Going deeper into the mailbag to get to all of your guys' questions here, Franco says, With Trayvon Walker flying up draft boards and people saying he's better than Jordan Davis, if he falls to us, Titans can't let the possibility of having El Jefe next to him pass, right? They would literally be immovable objects and unstoppable force. Okay, so listen, Jordan Davis is awesome. I'm not going to take away from that at all. Can't do that at all. But I'm I'm not for taking uh, a nose tackle... uh, in in the first round. I mean, the Titans, three years running. Isaiah Mack, uh, Tier Tart, Naquan Jones, all undrafted free agents who made great contributions for the Titans on the defensive line. Danico Autry slides inside on pass rushing downs. So, Jordan Davis, great player. Uh, maybe in a system that needs a three-technique rusher, he can improve into that. I mean, Vita Vea. Has great success in Tampa Bay. Maybe he could be that type of guy, but with the way the Titans roster is set up, I can't say that uh can't say that I would be for that pick. Uh, but I do appreciate the question. Um let me see here. Eddie. Eddie says, not sure if you like to do these, but who are your player comparisons for wide receiver group project uh wide receivers who are projected to round one? Uh okay. Tried to do the best I could, came up with some. Some ones that just came to mind. Garrett Wilson. I see like a Deontay Johnson type guy for uh, for the Steelers. Deontay Johnson at his best. Maybe even like Terry McLaurin, who's a guy who played at Ohio State as well. Uh, Traylon Burks, to me, is kind of like a a Dez Bryant, Demarius Thomas type guy. And honestly, shades of A.J. Brown with Traylon Burks. That's why I think if it came down to like Olave or Burks, uh, Traylon Burks would be the guy. So, uh, Burks kind of got some AJ Brown to him. Maybe not as quite as explosive, but uh, I could see that. Um, Chris Olave, at his best, I could see like some Marvin Harrison, but a guy like Calvin Ridley makes some sense as well. Uh, Jamison Williams, I honestly I thought of like a Chad Johnson. I think he could, you know, I'm not as uh, vibrant of a personality, of course, but Chad Johnson, Odell Beckham. Maybe not quite as explosive as Odell Beckham. Maybe more of the Odell Beckham that we got in Cleveland and in L.A. when he was healthy and on the field. But I think Jamison Williams could be a a guy like that. And then Drake London gives me like Mike Williams, Mike Evans vibes. Uh, So that would be my comparisons for them. Uh, Dale Big Sam said, Do you see any way Crookshank comes back? If not, who is a realistic replacement? Honestly, he basically said his goodbye on Twitter at the end of the year. I think like Jayon Brown, he's going to get you know, one to two million dollars to go play somewhere else and get a bigger role. I just don't think that the Titans will be bringing him back. I hope so, though. I hope so. But uh, Dane Belton is a guy from Iowa that I've really pointed out 
He's a defensive back. I think he has some ability to be similar to what Crookshank was and at least develop there. But I think the realistic answer here is Elijah Molden is going to be in that role next year. The Titans love bringing more of a pass first slot cornerback on the field like Buster Screen did last year. And I think they'll still go with that approach and then they'll move Molden to keep him on the field to that dang Crookshank role as the tight end stopper and that, that fourth cornerback to be out there in dime package situations because he can also play a little bit of linebacker and play in the run because he's physical and understands run fit. So I think Elijah Molden is the real answer to your question there. Uh, Paris DeSoto said, after the draft and free agency being done, what do you think our weakest position will be? Also, Chris Rock and Will Smith come up to you and ask who you think was wrong for the Oscar drama, who you pick, gun to head. Uh, okay, so I think the weakest position on the team will still be wide receiver. I think that the Titans go with different positions with the first round pick, either quarterback or offensive line. And I think that they draft a wide receiver in the mid rounds. Um, and I think that would be a mistake, but I think that's what they're going to do. And then they'll try to maybe get a bargain um, again. Not like Julio because they made that deal, but find a bargain wide receiver around training camp. Uh, one of those veteran guys like, um, you know, uh, Jamison Crowder or something like that uh, that's still hanging out on the market as there is every summer. And gun to my head, it's Will Smith's fault. He's to blame because jokes get thrown. And if you can't make fun of somebody's haircut, and you can't know every single thing in the world about every single person in the crowd and every single medical uh, history aspect of every celebrity, you know, they get up there every year. It's like the NFL honors, the hosts roast the crowd and the crowd are. So not only do I not feel bad because that's the way it goes, but Jada Pinkett Smith is one of the most famous women on earth. She's gorgeous, regardless of the hair. She's made millions and millions and millions of dollars. I have a hard time feeling bad that they made fun of her hair. I do. I do. So to me, Will Smith can't come on stage and slap somebody in the mouth. Man, you can't do that. But I, I, it might be fake anyways, and it might just be whatever. So, anyways. Um, Maryland's number one Titan fan said, what do you know about Aaliyah? In my tweet for Mailbag Questions, I gave a little reference to Aaliyah. And listen, I was young when she was popular, but I had an older sister who liked R&B uh, and hip-hop and stuff like that. Had a big influence on the kind of music that I like personally, uh, but with Aaliyah, some of my favorites, uh, One in a Million, Are You That Somebody, obviously, is probably my favorite one, A Rock, Rock the Boat, I can't sing too much on here, you guys probably will appreciate that, but YouTube will copyright strike stuff, and then uh, More Than a Woman, uh, I love uh, the way that that was sampled, uh, that Drake sampled that in a recent uh, album, so uh, all that would be my answer to Maryland's number one Titan fan. Uh, Clay Barton says... Uh, kind of a two-part question. Clay Bart. Oh, I understood the reference. I think that's your real name, though. Uh, what position do we take at 26, or if we trade up? What If, if the Titans tr make a trade up, and you see the Titans have traded up, they're taking a quarterback. If the Titans are at 26, I think they take offensive line. I think that's where they end up going, an interior offensive lineman. Titans Therapy said, in a fight to the death, would you rather fight 10 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? My answer is really simple. Less of them to deal with is going to be, I'm going to take the horse-sized duck. I know it sounds scary, but I'd rather wrestle a big duck than fight 10 ducks who are as strong as horses, you know, or the size of, or yeah, or horses the size of ducks and have to deal with 10 of them. 10. It's a lot, man. Numbers, strength in numbers. Um, mailbags are going. I got to take a drink. Hold on, guys. I, my apologies. Peek behind the curtain. I can't do it. Drink your water today, everybody. Drink water. Water is important. Uh, big water guy. Uh, Caleb Dyson says, your take on the infamous Oscar slap. Okay, I'm going to look at it from a different angle here. I gave you, like, who I personally think's to blame if I have to choose and blah, blah, blah. But... Again, I don't feel that bad for Jada Pinkett Smith. I don't think that a slap is serious enough for Chris Rock to whatever. Chris Rock, the joke. I don't. Ha I don't have a problem with the joke. I don't really have that big of a problem with the Will Smith stuff. It's all entertainment at the end of the day. I. I don't have a problem with people making memes and making jokes about it. Guys, 
it's not that serious. A bunch of celebrities got together to give themselves awards. <laughs> and one of them slapped the other one because of a bad joke. I mean, it's just it's just drama television. It and the jokes are funny. You're going to remember that for a long time. The memes are going to be hilarious. Like life is just too short to get bent out of shape about it. I think it was hilarious. The whole thing and I don't blame anybody or anything. It just is a hilarious part of living life, man. So just enjoy the memes and don't take it too serious. Uh, ladies man 217. Hey, good for you, man. Uh, how do you feel if we draft a QB at 26? If we do, what do we do about wide receiver three? I think if they draft a QB at 26, they look for a wide receiver later in the draft because it's always a deep wide receiver class. But I don't know that that would be the right move. And then he says, also, favorite part of the new Batman movie, which was awesome. Uh, for me, it's the I am the shadows part at the beginning. Batman weaponizes the shadows. That's the whole point. You, people see a shadow. They don't know if Batman is there or not. And just the fact that he could be there. They quit doing their crime or they run or we weaponizing the shadows. Such a cool aspect to the way that Matt Reeves put that together. Um, but I got a bunch. The, the scene where Riddler and Batman finally talk to each other in Arkham State uh, Hospital. Man, Paul Dano's acting there, and man, Robert Pattinson's reactions and the way he plays it is great. Any interaction with Batman and the cops, like when he gives the technical name for, um, he knows that the the mayor was alive when his finger was cut off because of the the scientific way that the blood dried. Uh, he can see the blood splatter of the murder weapon on the ground, and the cops don't know what it is. Uh, when him and that cop are talking about the the tool for the carpet, just all the, and all the Gordon stuff, all the interaction of Batman and the cops. So awesome. So awesome. Uh, the chase scene, the Batmobile chase scene. I mean, that's the best Batmobile chase scene of all time, man. That was just awesome. Um, and then I don't want to ruin it. I can't help it. It's been out for a long time now though. Almost a whole month. The adrenaline thing at the end. It just, oh man, that was so awesome. That was so awesome. Okay, I'm nerding out on the other thing I love uh, as much as football, so we will move We will move forward. But Timothy John said, um, New York City Titans fan here. Sweet. Uh, do you think Isaiah likely will still be available at pick 90? My answer is no. If not, do we maybe trade up to get him or let a tight end come to them at 90? There are so many tight ends in the middle of this class. You know, Kate Auden, Jeremy Ruckert, uh, Cal Katerra, so many more uh, that I could get into and will get into uh, in our draft preview. There's no reason to trade up for a tight end in this class. Uh, Nate Acefa says, favorite J. Cole song and verse. I was bumping J. Cole this morning on the way to work, actually. Uh, my favorite songs, I have five of them, uh, or four of them. Land of Snakes, Voluminati, uh, Role Models, actually Fire Squad 2, uh, Let Nas Down, basically anything off Born Center or Forest Hills Drive, I'm in. I'm in for it. But those four, Land of Snakes, the storytelling on Land of Snakes, ideal. The last verse, so good. Voluminati, his line about the Voluminati and how they wouldn't want him, so great. Role Models, obviously, a classic. Let Nas Down again, the storytelling. I love lyricism. I love storytelling. Um, the whole way he plots out that song. Just incredible. Read the lyrics. Listen to it if you like hip-hop. So good. And then he says, what's your favorite verse feature? Okay, I had to pick two. His verse with the song with Benny lately, Johnny P's Caddy. I mean, I'll probably go to hell if Jesus asked for a feature. That whole rhyme scheme right there. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Just unbelievable. J. Cole's the best lyricist in the world right now. Uh, but his his feature on Pretty Little Fears, um, I forget, I think I'm going to say that his name looks like uh, Black. It looks like Black. I think there's a six in it. Six, I don't know. Uh, I sound old, and I am old now, but uh, that verse, amazing. And two totally different kinds of verses, too, which showcases J. Cole's versatility. Um, gotta, gotta keep pushing through here. Gotta keep pushing here. Uh, Cody Weath said... Number one, 
Uh, he has two questions. I am happy with picking up Woods in free agency and uh, looking at a wide receiver position in the draft. Well, trade. I get what you're saying, though, Cody. So my question is, do you think double dipping in the wide receiver pool during the draft would be a smart move for the team or something they might do? No. No, I don't. They Last year, they double dipped with Dez and Racy McMath. Get a good receiver high in the draft. Adam to Woods, Nick Westbrook-Akina, A.J. Brown, and then the guys you drafted last year, maybe pick up another veteran as you get closer to training camp and roll with that. That's what I would do. Um, second question that he had here was, do you think it's time for the Titans to invest a pick in quarterback in the mid-late rounds during this year's draft or waste, or is it a waste of a pick as they will just keep Woodside anyway? Uh, I said in my mocks, I didn't select one. Don't, if you're not, If you're going to take a quarterback, take them in the first round. That's how I feel. Don't waste – they're going with Woodside again. Don't waste a quarterback spot on a rookie who's probably just a career backup. All the good quarterbacks pretty much are taken in the first round. So if you feel you need a quarterback, then go get a, a one worth a damn. Uh, Leon Wills uh, could be Wilsey. I, I don't know for certain. WrestleMania on the weekend, do you watch WWE? I loved the WWE when I was a kid during the Attitude Era, but I just can't do it anymore. My willing suspension – of disbelief is not there. So no, I do not. Uh, Jordan Cohen said, talk me off the ledge. How are we supposed to get to the Super Bowl in a conference with Mahomes, Allen, Wilson, Burrow, Herbert, Watson, Lamar, not just this year, but for the next three to five years, are we doomed to purgatory? Uh, Jordan, the answer to that question is probably, unless we get somebody on that level. But my realistic answer is Mahomes, Allen, Burrow, Herbert, Watson, Lamar, I mean, other than Russell Wilson, they've all been in in the conference anyway. So the odds aren't really that much different now than they are than they were. So I'm not really that too bent out of shape about it. You get a great team, you get a decent quarterback, good play calling, you have a shot. Um, Scott Meeker says, "Is there a more ideal scenario than someone falling to 26 uh, that the Jets like trade back, get 35 and 38, take Dotson and McBride? Hell, I might even double dip at wide receiver. Pickens is there. Well, the Jets wouldn't give us 35 and 38 to move up to 26. It would be like a third rounder in one of those. So um, I don't know that it would really be worth it. I think I'd rather see the Titans trade up at this point to secure one of those top five receivers or get one of those top offensive tackles or get one of the quarterbacks they like. Uh, I think that's that's where I would I would be looking. The last question that I have here, I know it's been a long one, guys, but I appreciate you all. Uh, Andrew uh, Gasseller? Gasseller? I don't know. I'm sorry, Andrew, but I appreciate all your messages. Um, he just wanted to know who the starters for the offensive line will be. Taylor Lewan, yes, at left tackle. Aaron Brewer at left guard. Center, Ben Jones. Right guard, Nate Davis. Right tackle, Dylan Radins. I don't know. I just get this weird feeling that they don't want to start Aaron Brewer. They want to groom him to be Ben Jones' replacement. They got Jamarco Jones. They talked about him at left guard. I really think Radins and Jamarco Jones are going to fight it out at left guard. Uh, I really think that if they, if the Titans had their way, they would be able to get like a Trevor Penning or one of those right good right tackles. I think that's what the Titans would want. They would want to try to use Raidens at guard. But we will see. But the one that you have right now with Lawan Brewer, Jones, Davis, and Raidens, that would be the projected starting lineup right now, in my opinion. But that's going to do it, guys. A long mailbag on a Wednesday, 40 minutes. Wow. Um, the shadowy uh, locked-on figures are going to come for me for this one. But uh, that's going to do it for me today, folks. I think, barring any crazy big news, getting into the projected depth charts after free agency in Thursday and Friday show. So hopefully um, we're able to get to that soon. But hey, I'm not, not against big news either. Either way, I'll be back with you guys tomorrow. That's going to do it for me today. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans.